Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea, you know that. Let's get into it, enough with the pleasantries. Y'all know when I include someone in a video and then that person that I reacted to in the video reaches out to me and they're like real not happy about it. It happened again. They saw it real fast, it was real weird. Like right, right when it was posted, <laughs> the person was sent it by I don't know who, but I thought it was very interesting. So I thought I would share. Also, I already had this video like ready to be filmed. So I don't want it to make it seem like I'm like, oh, picking on this girl and like finding other things. I was sent this video that we're about to react to and the original like seven principles of network marketing video that we reacted to last week. That's the video we're and the person we are referencing in this video. I was sent those together. So I have the content. I'm gonna make a video on it. And now I have even more context for us to go over. So I made that video, the seven culty and vague or vague and culty, whatever principles of network marketing. It was very culty, very vague, right? Pretty self-explanatory. In that video, I said multiple times. Just a reminder, this isn't about this girl. I'm sure she's sweet. Not about her, not an attack on her. This is, you know, just about what she's saying and what is, you know, taught in network marketing and the cult tactics, blah, 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 whatever. I've been trying to say that more and more in videos. It's not just these companies, the CEOs, the people who work on the corporate side who are being manipulative, unethical, deceptive, things like that. It is the reps as well. And I think it is super important for you to see someone who is maybe your own age and be able to see how it affects them and to be able to just you know, point it out, whatever. So I posted that video within, I'm not even joking, like an hour or two. That girl's sisters, that's what she called them. That's what they called her. I don't know if they're actually related. They came all, woo goodness. They really came for me, attempted to at least, in my comment section on Instagram under one of my reels. They were saying that I'm a bully. I attack people's looks. Never did that in that video. Haven't done that in over, what, nine? months now? Nine months? They just kept going and going and going. And I said multiple times, you know, if you would like to actually have a conversation and I'm very open to it, but you know, once you start insulting me and accusing me of things, that's where I draw the line and I'm not going to be open to talking to you. They just kept going. They were insulting me more crazy stuff. So they were getting absolutely nowhere. To my surprise, girl, who again, we're reacting to another video of hers today. She sent me a voice note, which already I'm like, oh dear God. All right. I got to get ready to screen record it because yikes. So she sent me a voice note saying something along the lines of, you know, I saw your video. I don't really take anything to heart. Probably should because it's like about what you're saying. Let me be very clear. And I put it in the pinned comment of that video too. I did not say anything negative about her nostrils at all. If you're going to get mad at something that I did not say, words that did not come out of my mouth, that's a you issue and not a me issue. I was referring to the angle of the camera. I think I said, oh my God. Either way, I was like, I cannot stop staring at her nostrils because instead of having the camera up here or level or above you, or maybe just slightly down, she had it like at like a 45 degree angle down. No matter who you are, the focal point then in the center of the video and in the center of this video is gonna be your nostrils. I don't think she has ugly nostrils. I don't, I do, no. I didn't say anything negative about them. There's nothing to say negative about them. Then said that she would love to share her story with me. And I was like, sure. So before we get into this video where it's titled, Thank You Network Marketing, cringe, let's go ahead and go over what she said, which yes, legally I can play the voice notes because she knowingly recorded herself and then sent me the recording. So then it is my property at that point. I'll only probably play like two of them because it's just real dumb. She sent me a voice note, whatever. And I said, hi, Giselle, I appreciate you being able to have a rational conversation and understanding that that when I feature someone in my videos, it isn't anything personal with them. They are just an example, as I stated multiple times in that video. Also, I was not making fun of your nostrils. I'm very sorry if my words were interpreted that way. The angle of the phone was below you. So that's why I said, I'm looking up her nostrils. I'm sorry that your feelings were hurt regarding that. I was not making fun of you at all. And I'm sorry that you've dealt with people making fun of your nostrils. There's nothing to even make fun of. You're beautiful and I'm open to talking via DM. I would like to keep it to texting slash typing so that I can articulate my thoughts better. I personally like doing that when I'm having this type of conversation. If I'm just like sending y'all something like real quick and just answering a question for you, okay, that's different. But in regards to trying to like get my point across, yes, that's better. No, it was like 10, 24 p.m. Pretty sure Tony had already gone to bed. I was just sitting on the couch watching a show or something with Wiggum. So I'm not trying to like do voice notes 
notes back and forth. Also, a lot of times voice notes will just send on their own and like cut you off if you move your thumb weird. So like, I'm not, I don't like that. I would like to at least try to portray myself as professional in some sense. Let's go ahead and listen to these two voice notes. Hey, Chelsea, thank you so much for getting back to me. I really do appreciate you and your message and I feel it. And on my end, you're totally good, forgiven. Um, I would love to just share my story with you if you're open to hearing it. I know that you're probably wanting to text back and forth just so that if something is said, like you can repost it. And honestly, like I... I think my story is a little bit long. As you saw, you're like, oh, what network marketing company are you? Are you in one, two, three? Like, um, so if you're open, I can just shoot you voice notes and you can listen to them if you want. Um, But I think that my story is a little bit unique, but I also think that it's really powerful, um, especially because I was just like you, so skeptical and like, I didn't think it was a scam, but I thought it was a pyramid scheme. So I guess it could be the same thing, you know? lot to unpack there. I wasn't really asking for forgiveness. The apology was more for you than me. Like, I don't feel I don't feel guilty that you interpreted something, took something in a way that I absolutely did not mean it. But whatever. Her story is not different. It is not deep. It is not. It's it's just not. Again, I'm sure she's a nice girl, which I have heard from a good amount of people who know her personally or have run in like have had run-ins with her that she's very brainwashed done not great things to people that's what has been alleged to me i'm not stating that as a fact but yeah after i heard some stuff i like from multiple people i was like how did how how okay let's go ahead and listen to the next one so yeah just let me know if you're okay with me just sending you voice notes um and again i it's not going to be anything like me talking back and forth to you like I, I, don't, I don't do that I don't partake in that and it's just not who I am so I hope that you can just hear my heart through my voice notes um, and so that if you want to actually listen to my story you can and if not no big deal I totally get it. acting like having a conversation is beneath her is how I took that at least and of course this is all just my own interpretation of all of this But it's just so strange because if you remember in the last video, and of course I'll have it linked down below and it'll be up on the little thingy up here. But in the last video, she was saying how if anyone is like venting to her or gossiping, then she is going to ask them, hey, I'm about to meet with that person right now. Can I quote you on that? Like what? Like that's so, that part to me, like of that video, I was like, whoa, buddy, no. I mean, y'all saw my reaction. I was floored that she said that. I just sounded like such a grandma saying floored. That to me was like scary. So if anyone has any concerns and they come to you with it or they're trying to just vent to you as a friend, like, are you like, how not trustworthy are you? So let's go ahead and, oh, that's my flashlight. I'm definitely a grandma. Just flashlight on for no reason. So I said, I wouldn't say I'm skeptical. I'm pretty solid in my stance that MLMs are commercial cults that use unethical tactics, manipulation, and deceptive marketing. I was saying I would rather type it out so that I'm able to articulate better. You can do voice notes. That's fine if that's easier for you. I don't know why sometimes these people think that you like can't repost something if it's a voice note. Like I feel like it's even more damaging if it's a voice note. Another voice memo Monica in the making. I mean, I was gonna say they kind of look alike. No, they don't. They just both have brown hair. Anyways, let's continue. That's that's totally fine. Um, I heard you say that you were part like of three, that you had like gone into three network marketing companies and left right away. Um, I'm just so curious as, as far as like the unethical tactics, I do think that people in our industry have, you know, made it seem where, you know, <laughs> you're, you're going to make all this money and, you know, it's going to be little work. And I actually think that I've, I've been able to share the truth about my journey with network marketing because it hasn't been easy. It's been hard, you know? And, um, I think that, people that do do it unethically you know ruin it for a lot of people I mean that's okay that you have your stance on MLMs and how you feel about it but I would I'm just gonna start sharing my story so that you can kind of have an idea of like how I came to where I am today and so you can have an idea of like why I'm so passionate about this industry 
I don't want my next message to her to come off as like really mean, but I could just not wrap my head around, why do you want me to hear your story? Again, with peace and love, I don't care about your story. It's most likely gonna be the same as as a bunch of other ones I've heard. It's not gonna be different. You might think it's different, but it's not gonna be different. Also, your story isn't going to like change my view, my stance, what I think about anything that you said in the last video. I thought that was weird. But again, this is a great example of how I'm able to have rational conversations. So I said, I am curious, though. Oh, I meant to say as to why. I am curious, though, as to why you want me to hear your story, though. Why did I say though like six times? You're supposed to be articulate. What has happened to you in your past or your success, lack thereof, in the network marketing industry does not change the unethical nature of MLMs or the facts. Now let's get into her story. Are you asking me what has happened in my past? Um, I just, the reason why I wanna share my story is because I think oftentimes people, you know, say bad things about uh, network marketing because they've had a bad experience. And I've been skeptical, um, but when you're partnered up with the right people, the right company, um, and there's integrity, like. That's not even a question. However, like my story being very unique, um, I was part of a team that I didn't align with. I actually sat out for a whole year, which is why I wanted to share my story with you in the sense of like, I was part of Isogenics and then I found Enagic, but I wasn't trying to do Enagic as a business. But because, you know, you should focus on one, I ended up sitting out for a whole year building the water business. And then I relaunched Isogenics in 2020 because that's where my heart is, you know? And again, I never intended to do this as a business, but it fell in my lap. And prior to me doing what I'm doing now, I was um, a yoga instructor and a spin instructor managing gyms in Miami and just always exhausted. And the only reason I bought Isogenics was because I tore my meniscus and I was training for the half marathon and I was worried that I was gonna gain weight. (laughs) So it wasn't like I'm coming into this to do this as a business, but within my first two weeks, I made $950. And I was like, wow, like this is awesome. Like how did this just happen, you know? And then within my first 30 days, I dropped eight out of the 10 pounds that I wanted to lose. My sister also being super skeptical and you know how it is like every a lot of people are skeptical It's not you know, it it just is the nature of it all because it's been given a bad name But I think that it's such a beautiful gift. I've been able to I don't know if you're a believer, but um, Looking back at my story now like I had to go to the water business because I needed a strong foundation with my faith and I found that there and so Now I moved to California to be closer to my water mentors and my water team, but I build isogenics. So, um, and God has really transformed my life in so many beautiful ways, which is why I, um, I pray that you just can see another side, you know, especially, um, from someone who very much was anti network marketing, Um, My sister was able to release 40 pounds and um, it's just been such a fun business to build and it's not perfect. Network marketing is not perfect and, you know, every industry has their thing, but like my sister's in corporate America and she's miserable and like at least I... I get to travel and I get to do things that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to. I just like literally booked a one-way ticket to California and I never went back home. And like, I wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for my network marketing business. You get me? So um, I'm just trying to say that it's been such a gift to me and it pains me that people talk so poorly about it because it has really changed my life. And I know that it can change a lot of people's lives, you know, if they do it properly. Here's the thing. Her story is not different than anyone else's, right? It's not, you know, 
this just unique story. It's not. It's really, really not. She didn't like her job. She got manipulated into it. That's it. There is obviously a lot that like is a, a huge red flag, but I never had a bad experience in a multi-level marketing company ever. Joined three of them, got the ick, quit within 72 hours of joining each one of them. Well, within 72 hours. A few of them, it was like less than 24 hours later. I was like, nah, done. Didn't even have an experience. The facts are there. Yeah, a lot of it is, you know, the, the anecdotal evidence of like, this is a cult. It ruined my life. It, I mean, just because you did have a good experience does not diminish or deplete or just erase the millions of people who have had horrible experiences. And most of the people who are in network marketing still who claim that they've had a great experience are just brainwashed and they actually aren't having a good experience. I mean, isn't good experience subjective, but still it's it's a water cult that is very cringy. She managed gyms and was exhausted. Yeah, welcome to having a job. It's okay. Let's stop demonizing a nine to five. Let's stop demonizing being a W-2 employee. Because not everyone can be freelance. Not everyone can be a business owner. Not everyone can work for themselves. If we keep demonizing nine to fives, our economy will collapse. So please stop. A lot of people are skeptical because they know it's a scam. You joined a company to sell water, filters, filtration systems, whatever, because you needed God in your life? You just described a cult. Again, not about her. I'm sure she's a sweet girl. Said, I was very anti-multi-level marketing. No, you weren't. You wouldn't have joined if you were. It pains me to see people talking badly about it because it's changed my life. Working for myself and being a YouTuber full-time has changed my life, but do I care at all when people, they're like, make fun of YouTubers? No, because... I'm doing great. Some YouTubers do suck though. <laughs> I didn't have a bad experience. If a company's main source of revenue is its distributors and recruiting more of them, that's unethical. If you've made money, okay, 90%. Notice how I didn't say good for you because it's not good for her. How did you make money in a multi-level marketing company by, or like sustainable money by recruiting people? Not okay. 90% of people don't industry-wide. In 2021, the average annual income for all Isogenics reps was $926. I said that's before purchases and taxes. That's less than $80 a month. You see your experience as a positive one. You lost weight. You've made money. That doesn't mean that the majority of people do as well. I said, I do have a great relationship with God and a strong faith. I don't assume to know what God wants, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't want people to be losing money and working for free. And most importantly, using his name to recruit people into an opportunity for someone else's financial gain. I know I'm proud of that one too. And then she said, but that that's my thing. Like, I don't really believe that because how do you lose money if um, you are eating your food? Like if it was, a, if you weren't getting an exchange of a service or a product, then I would say that you're losing money, right? But like, let's say like for me, I got, my isogenics box and I started to look good and feel good, I'm going to put that money somewhere else, you know, might as well have a business opportunity that's going to allow me to create what I've been able to create um, in, short, in such a short amount of time. And again, not saying it's been perfect. It's been hard. Yeah. But I would rather have this be my heart. How do you lose money? by not making money back and just spending more money on products. She's saying all these things and she's not listening to what she's saying. Wasn't listening to what I was saying either. She just said it's a business. I might as well get a business opportunity as well. Yeah, girl, that's what we're talking about. You are not typically going to make money back. You're not going to make that money back. So you can't just try to rationalize that in your brain by saying, oh, well, I got these products. Okay. You're still working for free and not being paid for your time and wasting time and essentially wasting money as well because you're not being paid. A generalization, roughly 90% of people don't make money in multiple marketing companies industry-wide than what I had to experience at the gym. I gave my life, four years of my life to a gym. And then from one day to the next, they're like, hey, we can't afford your salary. And then they gave my job to a girl who didn't even have papers in the US and replaced me just like that. And so 
I don't believe that God also wants us to do that as well. And so, and again, like I found my relationship with God through network marketing because I grew up Catholic and I didn't know what that was like. You know, I didn't know what it was to have a relationship with God. I'm so confused by this. I'm not going to accuse anyone of being xenophobic, but why does it matter to the context of the conversation that the person didn't have paper? didn't have papers or was not a legal citizen, permanent resident, whatever. Weird. Also, yeah, you outgrew your position there. You could have leveraged that and gone to a, a different place. You didn't have to go join a cult. And if it wasn't for my mentors in, in Najik showing me the way, I wouldn't be where I am today. So it's actually the opposite in my opinion from my experience and again not saying that everyone has the same experience and that there aren't people out there that do things that aren't ethically but again like you have that everywhere right I, I, name me one industry that everything is perfect there isn't any like you know that's a perfect example of a straw man fallacy of yeah but what if we're not talking about that we're talking about multi-level marketing so my response was but with the business opportunity let's say because i was trying to like make it visual for her like in a sense of like numbers that she could understand she didn't understand it but with the business opportunity let's say you make ten thousand dollars in 2021 but you have spent over $200 a month on products, $2,000 on training seminars or courses like ones from Boss Lee, for example, which I know for, it has been, a, I was about to say, I know for a fact, it has been alleged to me that she bought into one of Jesse Lee Ward's courses, $1,500 on apps, subscriptions, and other content related business expenses, then $1,500 in taxes, then you've made $0. And then I said, do you think that any faith manipulation was used to get you into and keep you in an adject? Said I didn't say that there are industries that are perfect. However, no other industry's revenue is reliant on the people working in it. For instance, with me being a content creator, my income is based off of views and viewer retention, not off of me recruiting other people to become content creators. Also, in nearly no other industry... You have to pay to become an employee of the company, which is true. Very true. You you can't become a distributor for an MLM without paying. Goodness, no way. Like if you see what Priscilla and Colton, which by the way, who sent you that? That's so interesting. Yeah, I did move to California to be closer to them. That's how much they've impacted my life. Um, I, I didn't start in Nagic. Like it had nothing to do with faith. I didn't even know that they were believers and and that they ran their business you know the way that they do i actually just found the water because i was at yoga and they were talking about water and i was like what's this water thing i thought water was just water <laughs> i'd like come across this machine and i'm like i've been lied to all my life drinking fiji and and smart water thinking that this is like the healthiest things you know i say this with peace and love this girl seems so susceptible to believing so much tomfoolery. Allegedly, she has told people before that Enagic, Kangen water, can cure cancer. That right there is infuriating, and I feel like that just shows the type of person she is. Then again, she has been subject to undue influence. She is not maybe in her right mind. Anyone who would say that deserves to be elbowed right in the for legal purposes, that's a joke. I also think that it's really important to know, like, you can run your business however you want. Like, Priscilla and Colton are really big on sharing their faith. And I think because of that, I've, again, been able to, I'm almost coming up on two years of sobriety. I'm, like, living in purity. And, like, I was so broken before this. Like, I was in toxic relationships. And... Isogenics gave me the choice to leave and, and to do something for myself and not depend on a man. Like, I don't think you understand how good this can be for someone um, because it's been that for me. And again, it's not everyone's story, but if you have good leaders that are showing you the way, like it, it can really change someone's life. And again, that's why I'm really passionate about it. So I, I think like, I don't believe in coincidences, Chelsea. I think that it's really... First of all, don't say my name like that. That's creepy as... 
Second of all, for someone who's all about being hydrated, you are giving me a lot of mouth noises, a lot of dehydrated sounds, and it makes me want to smash my face up against my desk. You're recruiting people and selling a product. That's all you're doing. That's what you have to do. No, you had the choice before, and I'm very sorry that if you did experience that, not to doubt her, but I don't I don't know. I don't know if that's the truth. They'll basically gaslight you into believing that you were broken and that they saved you. And that's a way that they keep you in. Beautiful that you believe in God um, and that you have, you know, strong faith. Um, I don't know if the approach, in my opinion, comes off, you know, as something pleasant, especially because, again, me seeing that from the outside, I'm like, man, like, it kind of looks like she's hurt. Because you... You said the thing about my nostrils and you said, you know, oh, come on, like, hurry up already. Like, give this, like, it's not in the nicest way, you know, and I've never even seen your content or I, I don't even know what else you post, but I don't know. I just don't know if God, I feel like I don't think God would want us to be talking poorly about something else like that. That's like really helped so many people, you know, I don't know. And again, I'm not trying to fight with you. Who's trying to fight with you, girl? No one's trying to fight with you. This is a conversation. You took forever to say seven things. And then I had to summarize it because you took forever. After I've said multiple times that it wasn't a negative comment at all. It wasn't. Has nothing to do with me, everything to do with her. And that, that is infuriating. Again, hear something else and then use that against you. And it's like, that's was never said. How about you change your camera angle? There you go. I could have just said that, but I didn't because I'm a dumb dumb, but it's fine. Someone who has had such a huge radical transformation because of network marketing, both physical, financial, emotional, uh, name it, spiritual, like... I'm really passionate about it and man like listening to that video like (laughs) I sucked (laughs) but like the point is that like I was sharing content that I think can help people because I have been on that struggle bus where I drag people and I want it more for them than they want it for themselves you know so anyways I don't know I hope that you can hear my heart and that we can really continue this conversation because I think it's beautiful. Now, I might just be a cynical 31-year-old woman. In my head, when she sent that, I was like, why? Why? This conversation isn't beautiful. You're not making any sense. Why? What's the point of continuing this conversation? It's going nowhere. It's going in circles. It doesn't make any sense. And you're not understanding that, again, what you're saying is false. When I've laid out facts and you're like, well, that's not my experience. Okay. So I said, my approach is fine, which it is. If people see it as an attack, that's their issue, not mine. Holding someone accountable might seem like an attack if they are not ready to address what they're doing, their actions and their behaviors. I don't think you're trying to put me down. I think that you're deep into commercial cults and attribute everything good in your life to it, which from what she's just said is true. She's attributing every transformation she's had in her life to multi-level marketing or network marketing. And that's so cringy. There's really no point in continuing this conversation as it's going in circles. I heavily suggest you check out Dr. Stephen Hassan, cult X expert and freedomofmind.com. It's a great resource for people in cults. And she said, wait, so you really think it's a cult? And I said, yes, multi-level marketing companies are commercial cults. And she said, breaks my heart. What companies did you join? And I said, girl, this isn't about the companies I was in. This is because of the research I've done, what I've seen with my own eyes, the thousands of people I have helped get out and the people who have shared their stories with me about being in multi-level marketing and how it's ruined their relationships, finances and lives. And she said, I was just curious. And she said, but what about success stories? That's what I'm saying. Like, yes, some people might not have a good experience, but some people have a great one. You know, some people have a great experience with slavery, too, and make money off of that and human trafficking. But you know what? Majority of people involved in that, the victims, aren't having a great time. Does that make it ethical? No. Does that make it okay? No. I said less than 10% of people industry-wide. That's millions of people losing money. That's free labor for the company. Scams work out for some people. Someone is always making money in the scam. 
that doesn't mean that it's not a scam. Some people have a great time when they are a member of a cult. Others have their lives ruined, and others sometimes don't realize the power of undue influence until they leave. Manipulation isn't always the scary upline that's going to bully you and yell at you and saying you're not doing enough. Most of the time, it's the beautiful blonde upline that love bombs you and tells you this is where you're supposed to be and how God wants you to share this opportunity. I ended the conversation, which she saw and just, I guess, decided to give up. Guess God didn't want her to continue the conversation. I said, like I said, this is just going to go in circles. I didn't insult you in that video and it wasn't about you. What you were saying was just an example of undue influence and how nonsensical and manipulative network marketing can be. I don't know you. I don't wish to. I don't wish you anything but happiness to see the truth and to not recruit anyone into the commercial cults slash MLMs that you're involved with. Have a good night. Now it is time to react to her video titled, Thank You, Network Marketing. Are you ready? I'm not. And yes, I am speeding this up just a little bit because she speaks so gosh dang slow. What's up, Instafam? Happy Wednesday, W-N-D-A-Y. I hope you guys are all winning your day. It is a beautiful Friday night here in California, and we just got home from our- Is every day one day? W-N-D-A-Y? What? Why? Why? What in the corporate sales floor is going on here? Race of Freedom event. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. And honestly, I was not gonna go. I am on this thing where I'm gonna start saving a lot of money and I'm on a mission. Um, but like my mentor said, it was meant for me to be there because I actually got a free ticket, super last minute. Um, a bunch of my girlfriends uh, had no idea that I was actually going, hey Joe, what's up, what's up? Um, and honestly, like I will say, Hello. I'm here with Jasmine. Hi. Um, I've been going to so many events in the last few weeks um, and I have my celebration coming up in um, August. So I am a little bit fried in the brain. Um, a lot of these events, it's very similar stuff. What? No. What? Uh, um, what does that mean? I don't know. Okay. I just, yeah. Um, Some people are just, uh, anyways. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? The most of the, like, I'm trying to save money. I'm trying not to, you know, and great that she got free ticket, but it's like, you're trying to save money and not go to these events. And you've been to so many events and your upline was telling you that you should go, but then you just admitted that it's all the same. But let's be honest, we know that these events are just to brainwash you to keep you in. So of course, it's going to be all the same woo-woo meditation. I was about to say infestation. <laughs> Manifestation, hustle and live your dream. And if you're not doing it, it's because you're not working hard enough. Also, if she's doing so well in network marketing and it's, it's changing her life so much financially, why did she just get a part-time job allegedly at Lululemon? exactly why we wanted to come on here and just talk about our takeaways um, but what i want to share is that like if you're serious about your network marketing business guys it is like a non-negotiable for you to be at these events like non-negotiable i have actually traveled a three and a half years to be at the race of freedom events um i am not doing this like how I used to do it because I relaunched my business with Isogenics and that is where my heart and passion is. But every time I go to these events, I get so much like the testimonies that you hear. So excited to see you in Orlando, Joe. Um, it's just, it's, they're life changing, life changing testimonies, life changing. Um, like you just have to be there. That's it. Like if you're not in these rooms and you're in network marketing, you're doing yourself a disservice. Passion. I wish I had my life going right now. Oh my goodness. No. And, and it's the truth. Like a lot of people, um, want to change their lives, but they're not willing to take responsibility for the things that they need to do to get to where these top leaders are. And so if you have an opportunity to get to an event, going to an event isn't going to change your life. It's not going to help you make money in the MLM. What it's going to do is brainwash you further and further so that you believe whatever they are spewing. And then you're most likely just going to regurgitate whatever they said into whoever or on whatever platform. That's it. You're not learning any new sales tactics. If it was like a sales course, a sales seminar, sure. It's not. It's about testimonies. It's people trying to get you hyped so that you stay in it and so that you believe the dream so that any type of doubt that you're having is just completely squashed. Where there's multimillionaires, where there's people that are showing you the way, again, you're, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. Like, it's so crazy. It says you need to have your cup filled the people that you meet 
the memories you make it's so much it is so much fun like i have not missed one event since i started going to events and i don't just do like i'm part of two different teams so i feel like i have like back to back to back to back events i didn't even include that the event tickets in my little breakdown my little money breakdown that i did for her so I don't know how this girl is making money. That is insane. What it's doing is keeping you in, not helping you to make more money. But I will say like, I always gain something. I always gain something from every single event. You know what I gained from today's? Like listening to these testimonies, I literally was crying hysterically. Um, one of the girls on our team, she had a, um, a cancer testimony where- Right away in my head, I'm like, not money. You didn't gain money. You lost money by going to these events. I'm gonna go ahead and give a preemptive trigger warning because I do think that she's going to possibly be making a lot of just egregious claims, bringing up manipulation in regards to like cancer. I was about to say cancer victims. We ain't victims, survivors. And as someone whose family is riddled with cancer, I find that highly offensive. Testimony where she was diagnosed with, what type of cancer did she have? I don't she know. Had a she had a, a she had a tumor the size of a football, football. on her ovary. So crazy. Um, but that's not what actually. She's also hit. very tall, but yeah. still, that would be big for anyone. Um, but you see how annoyed the main girl just got, or it, it seems like she just got super annoyed. Like, get off off my live. Like, do your own. I'm trying to tell a story. You're messing me up. How about y'all stop screaming over each other? Or what they say, football sized? Is that possible? A foot and they were like, oh, well, she was tall. Okay, but like a football sized. Our skeletons are only so big. Like organs don't really have to do with your skeleton, but like that's where they stay. I feel like they got their balls mixed up. I feel like it was maybe like a baseball or a softball. Lost your dad. Like for me, it reminded me like my dad is so important to me and I don't spend enough time with him. And like I need to make that a priority in my life. And it's hard because he's literally moving to Costa Rica, but that's besides the point. The, the point is that like, I had to go there and get moved by something to like, which is sad, but it's the truth. Like, you know, this is really disgusting. Oh, it's no, that's the powder oh, from the like powder. the, the powder packet. Anyways, it was so great to see everyone. And, um, yeah, it's crazy. Cause I literally lived two minutes from the hotel and I was like, there's no way that I am not going to go to this event when I've been traveling for three and a half years to get there. And, and then let's take it back because I know that there's going to be people on here that are going to um, listen to this. Um, let's take it back. Girl, where were we even going? Because I, I need a roadmap. Also notice how they just didn't even finish the thought of, yeah, that person had like a 47 pound tumor on her ovary and then just moves on to the next thing. Well, okay, why did, then what happened? Is she okay? Started going to these events, guys. I was, I had just gone out of a relationship. It was a very toxic one. And I was gonna fly out with my entire team. Um, there were sidelines, my uplines. And last minute, I find out that no one's going. My upline's not going, my upline's upline's not going. And I had to make a decision. And I remember like I hadn't traveled by myself. I had no money. And I was like, do I do this? Is this for me? Like, am I really gonna get on a plane and go all the way to um, Las Vegas and meet hundreds of people that I have no idea who they are? Not only that, but I was broke. I was so broke. I was negative $300. Like my mom literally had to lend me $100 for the weekend. And she's like, here's your birthday present. I was like, okay I'm, I'm doing this and i went and i showed up and i went to this event and i heard from speakers all over the world that, that were having success and i was like if they can do it i can do this too and and a lot of the times guys like people have very similar stories a lot of people are broken a lot of people are broke and they're average people just like me and here they are speaking on stages making millions of dollars and i'm like okay like this is a possibility for me and i made a decision four years ago that I was never gonna stop. And I show up every day. I show up every day, even when I don't want to show up, even when I'm tired, like that's what you have to do. It's either that or go and work and build someone else's dream. No.
if you don't know what financial freedom is if you don't know what time freedom is look it up guys like people are literally living life by design because they make a decision every single day to show up and serve people but you aren't you don't have financial freedom Net network marketing isn't giving you financial freedom you just had to get a new job so absolutely what are you talking about and the more problems that you solve the bigger problems you solve um the more consistent you are the faster you're gonna get there it was so great to see everyone today um hello 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 anyways i don't talk about network marketing as much as i should but um i'm really passionate about it you don't talk about it as much as you should that's all you talk about what do you girl what you're no you're doing enough you're doing quite enough it really has changed my life in, in so many ways, like insanely amount of ways. I've been able to move across the country. I've been able to travel the world. I've been able to meet the most incredible people. And you know what? Honestly, the biggest and the most important part of my life is that it brought me back to, back to Jesus. Like literally, that is what's the most important. I'm just talking about um, network marketing and events and making them non-negotiables. And we just left an event and I, I'm so fired up. I'm so fired up because these events literally are what changes people's lives. Hi, Gina. I'm so excited to party with you in Mexico. Um, Gina is a millionaire in our company. And yeah, like I'm going to go party with her in Mexico next month. Like these little things that I would have never thought were possible, but if it wasn't for network marketing, Marketing, it wouldn't have been possible possible for me so I am so passionate about it I think that like if people understood um, what this profession can give them if they got a little taste of what this profession gives them like they would never want to stop they would never want to stop because it is literally the greatest gift in the world and the fact that everyone has an equal playing field and it doesn't matter if you have a degree it doesn't matter what color you are it doesn't matter what sex you are it doesn't matter nothing matters here what matters is how much time and effort you put into this and how many people you serve? What if you are horrible at sales? What if you're great at sales? What if you have no friends, no following, no money? You're not good at social media. Did I already say that? <laughs> like, what if she can't get off for work and she has to, you know, do something with her network marketing team? Is she just going to quit that job? Probably. That's unfortunate. And how many people you bust along the way? And I think for me, the biggest part, the you best part... Right? If you want, I don't care. The best part for me is the person that I have become along the way. Because when I started this profession, um, I was the shyest person. Like, it's so bizarre to me that people used to talk to me and I would turn red. I remember I had a boss, um, my boss had died um, in my, uh, my gym. She looked at me and she's like, Giselle, like you walk with like your shoulders down, your head down, and it's, it's crazy because that is how I used to carry myself. I used to be like, I used to be so shy. I used to like not talk to people. Um, what if you suck at sales? You know what? Here's the thing. I, I don't sell anything. I don't sell anything. I share what's worth for me. Um, and because I've shared what, what's worth for me and I've turned my thinking of selling to serving, it's changed everything for me because if I used to not talk to people and I used to get scared of people, I sucked at selling too. And when I got over myself and when I started realizing that what I have is a gift, it changed everything for me because I heard this at, at an event, um, you know, in Arizona the other day. So you got brainwashed into thinking that you're good at selling, but also you didn't even answer the question. You just deflect it and you're like, well, you don't have to be good at selling, but you do. It doesn't matter what you call it, serving or selling. You are selling. Oh, I'm just sharing. No, 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 no. For you to make money, a transaction has to take place. If I, if I was blessed with this opportunity, why wouldn't I bless others with this opportunity? Like making money while you sleep is a, a game changer. Like it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Because that's how you make money. It's not some altruistic, I, because Jesus wants you to. That's not why. Your motive is not to bless people, to serve people. It's so, like, please stop that. It's because you make money. You wake up, there's more money in your account. You do, you do the work once, you do it right, and it pays you over and over and over. It's residual income. You don't recruit one person and then you get paid off of that for the rest of your life. No, that person has to also recruit people and also recruit people and keep going and going and going. It's not that you're doing work once and then getting, that's Giselle. I hope that you understand, which I'm sure you don't, but I hope you understand that nearly everything you're saying is wrong and this is a cult. If I was blessed to have this, 
I think everyone deserves to have this. I know it's not for everyone, but anyone can do this. Anyone can do it. And that's why you go to these events. And that's why you... Not anyone can do that. And that's why you go to these events. Why? I still don't see the correlation of going to an event where people just share testimonials. How How is that going to make you good at sales? It's not. Uh, multimillionaires that literally train you. So like in my business, guys, there's free mentorship. Literally all you need to do is buy your product and you have unlimited mentorship. Free means you're not paying anything for it. But you just said, literally all you have to do is buy your product. No, buy a starter kit and join the company and become an employee, a 1099 contracted. Then you have unlimited mentorship. Is it actually sales training? and how to recruit people or social media training? Or is it all going to be testimonials? You have to manifest it and all the woo-woo feel-good stuff that doesn't make you good at sales. It just keeps you more brainwashed. You don't have to pay for anything else. That's it. Buy your products. That's it. And then you have literally won the lottery ticket. And you can do whatever you want with it. How she said, then you won the lottery ticket. You didn't win the lottery. You won the lottery ticket, which is gambling and you have less than <laughs> less than a one percent chance of getting any money back at, at least that's an accurate example good job girl you didn't mean it that way but that was quite the freudian slip if i do say so myself and my sister um my sister was just like me i told my mom i would never sell a thing in my life again um because i tried mary Kay, and i was like you did? that was my first network marketing company You see, she learned something new. That was my thing. Oh, let's talk about that. So when I was 20 years old, 21, my mom texted uh, my sisters and I, and she was like, hey girls, who wants to go to women empowerment event? And we all said, me, me, me. And then pull up on a Saturday morning at nine o'clock and um, <laughs> I saw pink Cadillacs and I literally had a heart attack. I was like, mom, did you really bring me to a Mary Kay party? And she was like, Oh, Gigi, you're here. Make the best of it. And I literally looked at her and she's like, she, she says this story really funny. She's like, if looks can kill, you would have killed me like a million times. And what I didn't know is that that day would change my life. Um, I sat there, um, I cried, I laughed. So like her mom manipulated her. It sounds like her mom manipulated her into one as well. Oh, was your mom your upline? That is awful. There's just no hope, honestly, for this one. If she goes against network marketing, she's going against her family. And I said, I want to do this. And my mom literally was like, you out of all my daughters wants to do this. And my mom told me this. I will never forget this. She says, just out. If you learn the skills of network marketing, you will always be successful. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. Because I didn't understand it. I did not understand it. And being three years in, four years in. She got scammed by her mom. Literally got scammed by your mom. This took a turn. I didn't think it would take this turn. Now I feel, it's not funny anymore. Now I feel real bad for her. Three years in, four years in, by the way, I got pretty successful in Mary Kay, but I don't wear makeup. Like no makeup, no makeup. I don't wear makeup. So it was really hard for me to sell something that I don't do. I didn't do a skincare routine. I didn't do any of it. So I stopped doing it. And I told my mom, cause I still didn't understand it. I said, mom, I love you, but I'm never doing sales again. It's not for me. Like I am not, I, no, it's not for me. Because guess what? When I found the company that I'm with now, which is my baby, like I'm so passionate about it. Um, <laughs> My mom is the one that told me to do this again. And I was like, no, 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 Like sales is not for me. And I thought that Mary Kay was the only network marketing company. Did anyone else think that? Like, I didn't know that there is network marketing for basically everything. Like I had no idea. Like I just thought it was Mary Kay. And what I thought about it was that it was for old people. And I was wrong across the board. Mary Kay kind of is wrong. Just kidding, sorry. It's not. It's not? It's not. My upline was like three years older than me. Yikes. Ooh. Again, just like her mom said, if looks could kill, her roommate better watch out. Oh my God. She said, Mary Kay is, is kind of for old people. And she said, it's not. Girl, it is. It's gross makeup. That's hideous. But girl, it sounds like you're in a toxic relationship with your mom too. And that your mom has like scammed you. It's not. My upline was 
like three years older than me. Oh, the qual. Oh, the quality. The quality. Oh. I feel like when you're younger, you, when you know better, like nowadays, I feel like we. Sorry, I'm not gonna talk about it. Okay. Anyway. Honestly, I liked it. I did not mind it. I, I, the only time I ever did makeup was when I. Is that her roommate? <laughs> oh yikes. Was when I would go to Mac and it was like heavy duty. And so for me. It, it, the point is, is that I told my mom, no, I was like, mom, no sales is not for me. I'm not doing this, whatever. Mind you, mind you, I, that's the first time I learned about Jesus, like business and Jesus together. I, Cause my Mary Kay girls are like, they were all about their faith and they would pray on calls. And I was just like, that's beautiful by the way. Um, and then, so when my mom tells me about, you know, isogenics, I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not doing any other network marketing company. Like I'm not. And my mom, like, she was like, Giselle, just take a look at it. Take a look. I was like, no, no. Did her mom also recruit her into Isogenics? That is so sad. Girl, you told your mom no multiple times. Also, you said that you were never going to do sales again. You're in retail sales. Maybe what you're not liking is the recruiting people aspect. It sounds like that's the issue that you have. Same. I'm right there with you. We agree on something finally. Hard no, no. I'm a yoga teacher. I have a spin instructor. Like, it's not for me. I gave her every no in the book that you can imagine. And guess what? I told my mom, fine, I'll listen so that she can shut up. Like, literally, I told her, fine, I'll listen to your friend. And um, I did. And guess what? It went in through one ear and out the other. Because all I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't open to receiving. And because I wasn't open to receiving, I blocked it out. It was a choice, you know? A lot of us. Or did your gut know that it was BS? Is this infuriating you? Cause same. A lot of us are presented with opportunities. A lot of us are presented with um, life-changing opportunities. And we say no, because we're closed-minded because we just don't know what we don't know. Or because it's too good to be true and it's a scam. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Right? And so, Fast forward, I'm sharing my story somehow. Fast forward, um, I come across a girlfriend's Instagram post um, and this was maybe three years later. <laughs> so sad, three years later. And I see that she releases 70 pounds. And I was like, girl, I don't know what you're doing, but you look great. I don't know why they say instead of lost 70 pounds, they say that she released 70 pounds. That's like a weird, like, like culty vernacular as well. I think they say that because when you lost something, there's like the possibility you'll get it back. But if you like release something, like you don't have any intention of getting it back, maybe. Are you open to learning what I'm doing? And I was like, yeah. Um, at this point, I was teaching spin like three times a day. I was teaching yoga and I was actually training for the half marathon in Miami. And I was so excited um, because I was never a runner. I was never a runner, like I was never a reader. And what happened was, is that I tore my meniscus. I tore my meniscus running for this half marathon. And I was so scared that in my, I was having surgery for my knee and in my process of, of, of recovering that I was gonna gain weight. And so when my girlfriend tells me, you know, hey, this is what I'm doing. I was like, you're doing isogenics. That's the same thing that my mom told me about five, three years ago. And I told her no. And so I remember being in the car and I was like, oh my goodness, my mom was so right. My mom was so right, but all I heard was $600 and I didn't have $600 at the time. Like I was busting my butt at the gym and I still didn't have extra money. Like I was working really long hours and I still was like tired. And so I was working really long hours and I was still tired. Duh. This is when it all changed for me. My boyfriend at the time, I'm still doing the same thing that I was doing three years ago. I'm still with Isogenics. I'm still selling uh, my nutritional system. I'm still, you know, now we have the collagen that's done 1400, uh, it's done $200 million in sales in 15 months. It's, it's pretty fascinating. Anyways, um, but DM me, we'll, we'll talk. So I fast forward, I end up saying yes. I put my last $300 that I had and my boyfriend at the time, um, he was like, look, if you wanna do this, I'll support you. Because I remember saying, I, I remember her telling me like, Giselle, you can lose the 10 pounds and you can make your money back. And for me, that sounded like a win-win. And because I was having surgery, and, and here's the thing, I was eating clean. I was, at this point I was vegan. Um, I was um, very intentional about what I was doing Monday through Friday, but I was dating a firefighter. And when I was dating a firefighter, I don't know if you guys know, but firefighters like to party. So I was partying like that. And I was drinking as much as my boyfriend at the time was drinking. I was eating like he was eating. So I was always stuck with those last 10 pounds. And I just wanted to get rid of the last 10 pounds. I get my box, um, I get it the day of my surgery. I start the next day, 
Um, I, I will never forget this. It was February 1st. Within my first two weeks, I made $950. And within my first 30 days, I dropped eight out of the 10 pounds. And when that happened, I was like, wow. First of all, how did I just make $950? That was most likely just water weight. Any type of weight loss product, it's most likely going to suppress your appetite and make you poop your pants. Also, the firefighters I know, they, they eat and sleep. <laughs> Almost done, we have eight minutes left. Well, first of all, how did I just make $950? I don't even know what I just did. For me to make that at the gym, it was like two weeks and it was busting my butt. I was busting my butt. You mean like do actually doing your job? It's $12 an hour, $12 and 25 cents an hour. You know exactly what you did. That was not just off of sales. That was you recruiting people. Literally not possible without a downline or without a massive following, which she doesn't have. I'm gonna get into details, but when I saw those $950 by just helping like a few of my friends get started on something that was making me feel really good, I was like- You wouldn't even see a difference of that within the first two weeks. Think about it, after working somewhere for two weeks, what do you really know about the place? Do you have a good gist? Do you even know where the bathroom is on each floor of the building? No, you don't. <sighs> All right. Oh, this is life-changing stuff right here. And I started to really pay attention to what was happening. And the fact that, I was, I, guys, I was four months in and I was traveling and I was going down to the Keys and I was, you know, at this point, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that I couldn't be in the fitness industry forever because I was exhausted. Um, and I was actually doing my EMT. I was going to be a firefighter. Like that was, <laughs> that was a real thing. Like I wanted to be a firefighter at one point. It's because I was like, my mom said, she was like, you were so lost. You didn't know what to do. And when I thought of network marketing and I thought of you, I just knew that you'd be great at this. And um, fast forward, I, I remember sitting in the Florida Keys on a boat at my ex -boy, like with my ex-boyfriend and like his family, and I had made a $4,000 month. And I was like... She could have made that working a normal job. The, the $600 and then whatever other products she bought. I don't know if she bought more, but maybe. And then from there, her taxes and stuff too. I mean, that would probably land her around like, let's just say like 6,000. Don't you love how she just made it seem like, oh, I was traveling and I was in the Keys. I was on this boat making it seem like she was there because of the business opportunity. And yet she was just there with her boyfriend's family, ex-boyfriend's family. And I was family. like, I've never made that much money having so much fun in my life. Never, never, never. Literally traveling to Florida Keys on a boat all like, and, and here's the thing, you can earn money as you learn to do this business. And I, I had dropped, I ended up losing 18 pounds. You mean paid training? Like every company in the world has, not every company, I understand, but most companies pay you while they train you. Like it's not a foreign concept, girl, get a real job. Um, I started reading books. I started carrying myself differently and it really just changed my life. It really just changed my life. And I remember um, there was something that was really, um, that I was really struggling with. I really wanted my sister to do this with me. My sister was struggling so much with her weight. She was um, 40 pounds overweight. She was busting her butt at the gym. And I was like, man, like, hey, like I have, I have something for you. You know, everyone was joining me. And all I was doing was posting pictures on Instagram, honestly, like that's what I was doing. Um, and, and, and doing three-way calls with my friend, that, like she was helping me, whatever. And I really wanted my sister to do this with me. And I remember her telling me like, no, I will never do this. It's a pyramid scheme. Stop talking to me about it. And she, and those were the, the four lines she would always tell me. And I'd be like, but you really need this. You really need this. Like you're going to the gym, you're eating clean and you're, you're not losing the weight. And I remember like telling her like, maybe you should go to a doctor. Cause I don't think it's normal, like what's happening. And the scary part about this is that she actually hadn't seen a gynecologist at this point ever. And she was like 20 something years old. And I was like, maybe you need to go to a gyno. And so, Guess who has been working out consistently now for, which I actually, after I film this, I have to go to the gym and it's going to be real late and I'm going to hate it. Guess who's been working out for six months consistently? This girl you're looking at or not her, me. I don't know if she has, but me. Yeah. Guess who still weighs. I actually haven't weighed myself in like a month, but around like 140, 145. Yeah. The number on the scale has not changed. 
at all. Guess who's also lost like multiple inches off of my hips, my arms, my neck, my my waist, my stomach, my legs. Sometimes the scale doesn't change. Sometimes you're not going to lose weight, but you're losing fat. Also, many times you're not going to see a difference because it's your own body and you see it every day. You're not going to see a difference within two, three, four, five months. I'm very, y'all know I'm very open about that. I just started seeing a difference. Also, why specifically would you say go see a gyno? Because that's kind of weird. Four months into me doing this, she actually texted me one day and she was like, hey, sis, she's like, put my order in, the cheapest one. And I remember texting my mom and I was like, yo, mom, what's going on right now? I'm like, she, Vanessa just texted me and she told me to put in her order. I'm like, what's happening? So what ended up happening was that she ended up having an altercation with someone at work. And here she sees her sister in the foreign keys, making $4,000, like living her life and just looking good, feeling good. And she's in her corporate job, miserable fighting with her coworker, And so that was what sparked her interest into doing what I was doing. What ha what happened with the storyline of her going to the doctor? I thought she was gonna say that she like didn't have half of an ovary or something. Like what are, and the only cure is isogenics. Like what are you, this is the worst. I thought I was bad at telling stories. This is awful. And my sister um, is a huge, a walking testimony that this is like legit. It works. She dropped 40 pounds. She ran two marathons at her heaviest weight. And she ended up making $20,000 in her first year doing this in the pockets of her day. And so I'm here to share that this works. Um, it's life changing. I know that a lot of times we don't want to see it. We don't want to um, acknowledge, you know, that um, you can make a real profession. You can make legit money doing what we're doing. 90% of people who join multi-level marketing companies make zero dollars. The average profit per the FTC, per the AARP is zero dollars. By changing so many people's lives and... Along the journey, not only have I been able to accomplish so much, um, and I'm still just getting started. <laughs> like, it's, it's so crazy. I'm, this is a year three building um, consecutive because I actually ended up leaving. I went to my water company. I learned all the skills and, and stuff doing that. And then I relaunched my business in 2020, January 2020. And if you were doing so well, why'd you leave? Why'd you go back to this one? Like it, it just, it doesn't add up. None of it adds up. I went all in. I went all in and I was like, this is it. This is my home. This is Jasmine's post posting. I don't know if she's doing something over there, but I'll, I'll end up, I'll end here. Um, is that her roommate? Cause she absolutely looks like she hates her roommate. If you've been watching my journey, I really appreciate you. I appreciate everyone who takes the time to, you know, listen to my lives, listen to my Jesus stuff, listen to my, um, everything that I post on here. I, this has been like a, a journey for me and I've been super grateful for, um, being this young, shy, intimidated girl, um, who really had no purpose and no direction in her life, um, to being a woman that stands firm in her faith, who um, has, you know, taken on sobriety, who's taken on purity, who's helped so many people um, with the struggles that she had in her own life. And that's literally what I do. I teach people um, how to overcome things that I've experienced personally myself. And so if anything that I've shared, whether it be, you know, sobriety, whether it be your faith, whether it be purity, whether it be, um, you know, overcoming fear, you know, I just left every, I bought a one-way ticket and I didn't go back home. That takes a lot of faith, okay? It takes a lot of, oh my goodness, God. It takes a lot of delusion to do that. Living in purity, living in sobriety. Listen, if, if you're not trying to boink, cool, good for you, I don't care. If you're sober, cool, good for you, I don't care. Good Lord, it's so cringy. And using, just like weaponizing, I know that's drastic, but just like weaponizing purity culture sobriety and like being the perfect little Jesus follower seems like such a gross tactic to target people who are more vulnerable and who are unhappy with their lives and telling them that like this is all going to fix everything for them. But I've been able to do that. I've been able to travel. I've been able to win free trips. I've been able to create a life for myself that I never thought was possible. And I owe, a I owe it all to Jesus and I owe it to this profession. So is it free if you're if you have to work for it 
and like make the company a bunch of money and recruit a bunch of people? Let's go. Um, again, just send me a DM. Let's just talk. Let's connect. Um, and, and here's the thing. It may not be for you, but you may know someone who is praying for an opportunity. You may know someone who needs a solution for their health. You may know, know someone who, who can use an extra 200, 300, 400, a thousand dollars a month. I don't know. All I know is that I am so grateful that I said yes to this profession. I'm so grateful that I said yes to my uplines. I'm so grateful that I've been able to say yes to myself. And because of that, I've been able to create something special for myself. And there's nothing greater that satisfies me than to help people who need this. So I don't, I just shared my whole story. I love you guys. Um, again, if anything resonates, slide into my DM. Um, and let's, let's talk, let's talk. It's a conversation. Like you're literally getting paid to be the best version of you. I love you all. I will see you later. Have a great night. You are literally not being paid to do that at all. You are being paid to recruit people to join your team and to sell products. That's what you are being paid to do. <sighs> My lord. So much misinformation, so much just deceptive marketing, and it, that that's just so sad. Sometimes you just need therapy. Please go to therapy. This I hope she goes to therapy. If you have been in this person's downline, please message me. I would love to hear from you. I'm sure I will hear from her sisters, her 47 sisters that she has, and from her again. No personal attacks on her. I'm not sharing her Instagram. Like, I'm not doing any of that. Don't go find her. Don't spread any hate to her. She's just an example. I don't know her personally. Again, I do not want to at all. I have no interest in that. But now we've heard her story and how different it is. And it's like, girl, it's not different. It's just more of the same. You got got by your own mom. Oof. All right, friends, that is it for this video. Also, this morning, we hit 80,000 subscribers. So that is amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Looks like we have quite a few more people coming over due to the Dre McRae deep dive that I did last week. And that's awesome. So I appreciate you. I hope you understand how spicy you are. If you've made it to the end of this video, congratulations. You don't even got to stay spicy because you are spicy. That doesn't say stay sploy. That says stay spicy, all right? You are spicy. That basically just means that you are sexy and assertive and amazing. Please know how valuable you are. Your feelings are valid. If you're going through a tough time right now, if someone's being mean to you, it's most likely not even about you. They're probably acting out. But again, remember, there's a difference between being held accountable for your actions and then someone actually attacking you. Learn the difference. I will see you in my next video. Bye.